Welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented by Women Business Owners Alliance of Pioneer Valley. And the Women's Business Owners Alliance is comprised of over 100 entrepreneurs. And today, we have two of our members with us, and they will be sharing their expertise, knowledge, and tips. I'm Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and my co-host is... I'm Freda Brown from Divorce Financial Services. And today, we have with us Lynn Goodyear, who has Lynn Goodyear Associates, launching your creativity online. And then Liz Provo is mm -hmm. Mass Marketing Resources, and she is an authorized local expert for Constant Contact. So my first question to you ladies, and you can mm -hmm. answer as you feel, who would like to answer first, why should I have a website for my business? Let me take that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I generally say to small businesses is if you are ready to invest in getting your business to go forward, your website is your foundation. It's much like um, a builder building a house that you need a strong foundation in mm -hmm. order to go upward. If you don't have that foundation there, it's very hard to attract the kind of business that you're going to want. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really the hub. We, and Lynn and I have both talked about this in our, in our um, positions is you really want to draw people to your hub, which is your website. That's where you have everything that you've spent a lot of time um, your, your content, your, the look and the feel of the website. Um, you might have spent a lot of money mm -hmm. doing your website or you might have done it yourself, but whatever you do, that really represents you as a professional. So make sure it, it looks and feels like your brand and um, will represent you well for business. And so the well, the other thing about the website is it's really the only permanent thing you have as permanent as hmm. things are on the internet mm -hmm. right you uh, because it's the only thing you can control and you That's control true. things from the, se the security who can see it who can't uh, and you also have control over uh, how many pages you have again the look and feel whether you want the same picture on every single page there are so many different things you can do with a website, and it's all yours. And no one can take it away from you unless That's you don't true. pay for it anymore. Right. <laughs> so if I have a website and I really haven't done anything to my website, yeah. it's just sitting there. I mean, and people go to it, but I don't really interact with my yeah. website. Is, is that okay, or should I be doing it, something it, different? Well, websites today should be interactive. Um, and the first thing somebody does, rather than pull out the old yellow pages to find you, is they're going to do their due diligence and look at who you are online. So they might see, has she updated her blog? And if, and if we find that for you haven't done it for the last two years, I'm thinking this person isn't paying attention. Um, if you have outdated um, links, if things are kind of broken, um, all of that reflects on you as a professional, even though you know you really were just not paying attention. Um, the other thing is, and I'm sure Lynn will talk about this too, is the SEO value, the search engine optimization. That changeable content, paying attention to your website, really helps you get seen online by Google and other search engines. Mm -hmm. And you that's absolutely true. Uh, you don't have to have a blog, but if you have a blog, then what you write about which can be just about anything, but you want it to focus on your business or about your expertise. Uh, it changes frequently, a lot more frequently than your static pages do, and the most recent one is always at the top. Uh, but you really need to pay attention to keywords and all of these other things that you need to know about in order to be found on the web, uh, from the uh, online. You need online. To come up with the terms and the, all of the things that you need to do to have the search engines find you online. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, the Google Analytics and there are all other, all kinds of other things that those of us who are more technical can actually help you with, uh, show you what the reports mean. Are people coming to my website? Where are they coming from? Uh, what do they do when they get there? Do they just hmm. go away right away because there's nothing interesting on it? Uh, so if you that's another key thing you really have to have on your website because you need to be found. Mm -hmm. So keywords, keywords. How do I decide what are the keywords for my business? You really have to think about how people may be searching for you and um, less importantly how you think they're searching for you but ask other people how would you if you were trying to find 
help in marketing, That's how would you way, be yeah. searching? Because you may be thinking very specific terms according to your profession, mm -hmm. um, litigation. Now, you know, somebody's not gonna say litigation to try to find Freda Brown online, they're gonna say divorce. Um, or something that's going <laughs> to, or something that's going to be more meaningful to them, more layperson's language too. Um, and the other thing along that line too is um, when you're talking about finding you online, think about all the time we're spending off our websites and on social media. And when we're on social media, we need to be constantly thinking of how we're getting people back to our websites because, as Lynn mm. said, we own our websites and that's where we convert. That's where people buy our products, that's where people buy our services. And if we're not mindful of the fact that um, mm -hmm. everything we're doing that surrounds our website, we don't own any of those spaces. You know, those spaces are rented. And they change a lot. And they change. They change and I wanted rules, to ask, um, as far as if a business, you see many businesses have just a Facebook page. Mm, yeah. So now how does that work? Should they have both or is a Facebook page enough to get their information out there? Well, again, because the rules change, mm -hmm. you, it's really hard to keep up. Um, and also, the one thing about Facebook, when you have followers, you don't know how many of your followers are going to be getting anything that you write. Um, if you may have to pay to promote your page to get a higher percentage of your likes That's true. Mm -hmm. to actually see what that, you yes. post. Uh, and if you're a very small business, a solopreneur, you may not have the money right now to do that. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's expensive and it's a good idea, but again, the Facebook changes all the time and you don't know who's right. going to right. uh, right. comment on anything or like anything. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to have Facebook as your business website. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have quite a few um, of my clients who are advertising on Facebook now, and mm -hmm. it is in their budget. They don't think it is because they've never had an advertising budget. Right. Okay. But you can pay for to promote a post for as little as $5, mm -hmm. you know, a cup of coffee. Um, is that worth that $5 spending it on your business instead of going out for coffee in the morning? I think True. most people would say yes. But you have to use it wisely. You have to know how to really uh, look at your demographics and to target um, specifically who you'd like to have see that post. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, businesses could see about 56% of their statuses go on to their followers' um, news feeds. Mm -hmm. Today that's down to less than 5%. Oh. Right. Hmm. That's a big, and that's that's just a huge. big just difference. Because that's Facebook because changed. of Facebook's algorithm. And there's just too much stuff floating around out there. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. so if you want them to come to your website, you must have quality content, you know, provide, you know, a lot of engagement, get people mm -hmm. to like, to share, to comment on your posts. Um, and the more you look at your analytics, in other words, in Facebook, it's insights, but you've got to pay attention to that so that you can see if that post was working. And you can also see on your analytics on Google, who was the referral from Facebook this month? You might have had three referrals okay. from Facebook. Now it's telling you mm -hmm. it's working. They're coming back to my website. It's, they're doing what I wanted them to do. Okay, so does that go along with what the term that's out there, engagement marketing? Yes. Okay. It, engagement marketing really isn't new. I mean, we've we've been doing this since dirt. You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> um, engagement is the old word of mouth. Yes. And most of us would say, what's the best form of business that we've ever had? Word, word of mouth. Word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Right. So engagement is instead of that hard sell, like that salesy talk and getting people to buy right away, it's it's building relationships, quality relationships mm -hmm. that um, you nurture and you um, expand upon, that's engagement. They want to know you, they want to like mm -hmm. you, they want to trust you, and the way to do that, uh, the, one of the best ways is to have somebody who does like you and trust you and uses your services to tell all their friends about it. Mm -hmm. Correct. Amplify mm -hmm. the message. Amplify yeah. the message, exactly. Now if someone doesn't have a website at all, where's the first place they start? What mm -hmm. should they do first? What's the budget? Figure exactly. out the budget. You've okay, figure start out with how that. much you can spend because you can spend, you know, eight thousand. I uh, one of my clients spent wow. thirty-five thousand dollars on a website. Oh. <laughs> um, it's just kind of regretting that over the years. Yeah. But 
Um, and, and things have changed. There's a lot that people can do um, through good HTML editors now so that you can do some of it DIY or you can hire somebody to work with you to do that. Lynn does a lot of WordPress yeah. sites, um, which are kind of half and half. They, they're a little bit more maintenance <laughs> um, bit. Than, than some others around. Um, I, I do a lot with my clients that, um, you know, they really can be very professional and they have good back-end design and good SEO value now. So you can do a lot but with very little, but you mm -hmm. still have to know the structure of what you want to say. How do you want the world to view you? So okay. I have two Think questions. Carefully. First, first is how often should you be updating your website or adding things to it? Once a week, once a month, every other day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All Which of the one? Above? Well, not every <laughs> other whatever, day. Whatever you. But need. you know, I mean, the more frequently that you pay attention to it, you're going to get that payback from Mother Google, who says, you know, gee, this person really likes their website and they want it to be interactive. They're paying attention. Um, I usually suggest to my clients if they can write a blog once a month, yep, that's at least. And, and be consistent, consistent, consistent. So um, the blog that's is really enough. important. Yeah. The blog really or putting is. up a photo album or something like that. Um, you know, just paying attention to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if what if I had a uh, a, uh, a store? I know you can get stores online. Yeah, E-commerce. E-commerce. Yeah. I've got these words here, eBay, Amazon, <laughs> Etsy. What, <laughs> what, what is what and who should be doing what depending mm -hmm. on what and what should you be selling on those? Well, it depends exactly. Uh, Primarily on your product. Um, I, I had a client who was a jeweler, or who worked with jewelry designers, and she sells their products on both Amazon and eBay. And those, again, those sites are really under, you know, you have some control over what they look, the look and feel, feel, but it's not quite the same as your own website. And you still don't have the opportunity to talk about you as a person and why you're doing this and how you came to it, the things that get people to know you better. So you still should have a website that will allow you a chance to have a blog, to have email marketing, to do all of these other things that will engage your customers. Uh, on some of them, you cannot t use the email addresses of people that you uh, have do business with uh, for your own email list. It's hmm. prohibited by the company, and that's that can lead to disaster. Uh, you don't want people saying that you're a spammer. And also, too, talking about eBay and Etsy and everything, you can have an Etsy shop and sell your your crafts and Absolutely. products and everything, but don't just do it on Etsy. Get your own e-commerce going too. And the mm -hmm. cost of e-commerce has come down so much. Um, some some of the sites that I work with. $99 a year can get you a um, uh, up to 25 products for e-commerce, and if you pay $24 a month, um, you can have unlimited products and shipping included. It's a full-blown store. So why not have them buy off your site rather than send them to somebody else's where they're in competition with thousands mm -hmm. of others? You know, use it as an auxiliary, but also have it on your own site. Right. Yeah. Again, it depends on where people will find you. Uh, I mean, it's, it's nice if they find you on Amazon, but if they're looking for, say, jewelry, uh, there are an awful lot of people selling jewelry on Amazon. They want to find you. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's absolutely true. So now, does someone have to do all of that? Where's the best place to start? Again, just with the website, then kind of branch off to the Facebook page and to the blog. Is, mm -hmm. the, is the website really the place to start? Well, <laughs> you, you start where you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have a, a website that's okay, um, start thinking about how you would add other things to it to enhance it, your social media and, and everything else. Um, I really think that um, even every two or three years, no matter whether you have a site or not, it needs to be upgraded and it needs to be paid attention to because it, it's going to look outdated. Mm -hmm. You're going to look old. I, even if you didn't want it to, because design mm. has come along so quickly. So, True. you know, keep paying attention to it and, um, you know. So if I put something on my website as a blog, can I have that generated to my Facebook page so that it'll automatically go out so I don't have to do like two things? I, I actually map it out and you might do it yep. for your clients too. I send them a little flow chart of, here is your newsletter that's going out. In your newsletter, you put a snippet. You don't write the whole blog post. Right. 
then you link it to your actual blog because now you're getting them to go back to your website where you have a better chance to convert. At the same time, you can share that, here's my new blog post, with your Facebook audience or Twitter mm -hmm. or LinkedIn or wherever you want to. But it's always coming back. You know? So that snippet is just like when you see the first yes. two lines of yeah, it, and right. read those more. eye catchers and oh, I got to read, read more. And then those. what you do is you pull out those reports in your email marketing program if you're using not just through your regular ISP but using a, a legitimate email marketing program and you'll get to see where people went and you'll know exactly who went where. I mm -hmm. will be able to say if Freda opened up my newsletter and went to my blog and read it hopefully read it once you're there. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'll know you open the door, you know. <laughs> okay. And um, what about Twitter? So where, how, how does that oh, all fit in? Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that everybody has trouble with. Yes. I love Twitter. Yeah. Because it's, it's, really, it's really great if you really understand how to use it. And since I've started this type of thing, I started using it and then even Twitter kept evolving, mm -hmm. so I'm still not using it effectively. But if you know how to latch onto the channels, to the uh, handles, um, and uh, you know, just set up that you want to watch just this one person, or you want to just find out everything that people are tweeting about with a hashtag, uh, it can be very, very informative. Mm -hmm. But then, what do you do? You've <laughs> got to respond yeah. to the people that have interesting things to say and that can raise your profile too. Right. So the hashtag, that's the pound sign, right? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. So why, that do, why don't they call it the pound it. sign? Why don't they call it the hashtag? Because they want you to really be, you know, thinking about them as something new, but mm -hmm. the, it's just you know, speak. It, it is. And it's a way to <laughs> categorize conversations. Yes. A lot of um, hashtags became popular um, when people would go to educational conferences. Mm -hmm. And they might be in five different rooms during the day, all learning different things. But if they were tweeting throughout the conference, you know, the valuable mm -hmm. tips that they learned. Mm -hmm. At the end of that conference, if you just hit the hashtag, you know, conference 2014, you'll have every single thing throughout that entire day that maybe 300 people were tweeting about. So it's a, it's a very helpful resource in that case. Um, I think Twitter made me a better writer. Hmm. Really? Because you have to be concise. Boy, do you. And, and, and I thought yes. subject lines for email, which I'm always doing, you know, 40 characters, you know, five to eight words, I thought you had to be precise there. But um, when you talk about 140 characters and putting, you know, you only have room for so much, plus then whatever you're linking to has to be short enough, too. You have to put the good stuff up front, or nobody's ever going to read you beyond read that it. point. That's true. So those, Absolutely. when you when you click on that, so that's really just like, um, you can read more after you get those. Right. First you can link words. to another. You can link to your blog. You can link to somebody else's content, um, anywhere you want, or have a picture, a video. It's really a, a nice, nice platform. So. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> you, you have you have given us so much information, and. I think you need to. We need to find the first step, and that's that's what we got to do. Where we are now, and mm -hmm. then what we need, and then just kind of move forward with that. Is Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And if we uh, need help, we need to call Liz Provo or Lynn Goodyear, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, get your wonderful advice for us. So. I think we can close this up. Yes, well thank you for joining us today. And if you'd like to get any information on what we discussed today, you can check out these members at WBOA.org is okay. our website. And thank you for joining us.